Hi, it's Ms. McCarthy here, and welcome to my next book lesson. Today's book lesson is going to be on the Billion League as well as the Peloponnesian League. Before we get started, here are some objectives. Feel free to pause them and read over them. Before we get started, I want you to take out a piece of paper and take some notes so you can follow along. Yes, this does mean you. I know some of you the last time we watched the flip lesson didn't take notes. So this is your reminder. Take out a piece of paper and just follow along. Take some notes. This flip lesson is going to be short, so it won't take you too long to fill out some notes. At the end of the flip lesson, there's going to be some questions. So by you taking notes, you should be able to answer the questions. So let's talk about the creation of the Delian League and what it really is. So at the end of the Persian War, Athens decided that the city-states should stay unified if there was to be a future Persian attack. Now, we talked about how the Persians came to Greece and there was not one, but two invasions. So Athens was trying to think in the future there might be a third invasion of the Persians. So they should stay unified and create this league in case this is to happen again. So Athens creates the Delian League in 477 BC as a military protection league in case the Persians are to come again. At the height of the Delian League, there's around 200, 200 members that join. So it's pretty big. There's a lot of city-states joining. But there's one city-state that we've talked about in class that decides to not join, and that is Sparta. Now, there's a couple other city-states that don't join as well for their reasons, but Sparta is a very important player as to finding out what is to happen with the Delian League. So Sparta decides they're not going to join the Delian League, and they have a couple different reasons for this. They believe that Athens is starting to become a little too power-hungry, and they believe that it wasn't necessary for them to stay united in case there was another Persian attack. What Sparta decides to do, however, is they reform the old Peloponnesian League. So at this time, there's the Delian League, led by Athens, and the, there is the Peloponnesian League, led by Sparta. If we look at this picture here, those places in green is Athens and its allies, so Athens and its allies would be in the Delian League. In this more red color is Sparta and its allies. And Sparta and its allies would have joined the Peloponnesian League. And you'll see more of a yellowy peach color. This is the more neutral places. So they don't join either side. So if you were a city-state at this time, and you were trying to make the decision, which one should I join? What you should do is make a pro and cons list. Just like any decision you're gonna make, you wanna make sure that your pros are outweighing your cons, and you wanna make sure that's the perfect fit for you. You don't wanna just join a side and then later regret it. For the Delian League, some pros of being a member of the Delian League is that you will have a common navy and protection. So Athens has one of the strongest navies, and it has the strongest navy in Greece. So if you are joining the Delian League, you will have naval protection from Athens. If you are a trade-based economy, you're going to want to join the Delian League because Athens is in charge of trade in the Aegean Sea. And there's a common currency used between the city-states of the Delian League. Some cons of joining is that other city-states needed Athens approval, approval to trade or travel. So if you were a city-state, you would have to make sure you had the approval of Athens to trade with some other city-states that might not be in the league. Also, all criminal trials were held in Athens. So if you were a part of this league and something was to happen where there'd have to be a criminal trial, you'd have to go to Athens to have the trial, and that could be costly as well as just it would take too long. Also, if you decide later that you don't want to be a part of the Delian League, you, ha you can't leave. You have to wait until the League dismisses you. 
which could be a problem because if you want to leave and they decide they're not going to let you leave, then you're stuck being a member. Now let's look at the Peloponnesian side. Some pros of joining the Peloponnesian League is that there's a strong army. So Sparta, we've talked about in class, is a military society. So if you join them, you will have the defense of the Spartan army. Also, if you are a farming or agrarian economy, this would be the better choice for you in the Peloponnesian League. And another pro is that it was voluntary to join. So in the Delian League, if you joined, you had to stay. Well, in the Peloponnesian League, it was voluntary if you were joining or if you decided to leave. One con of being in the Peloponnesian League is that Athens was controlling the trade in the Aegean Sea, so it was hard to trade with Athenians or Athens allies if you were in the Peloponnesian League. That's going to make a roadblock for you. Which side would you choose? Do you see any other cons or pros for that? Let me know. So let's go and talk about Pericles. We've done our reading on him. You've learned about him in the other flipped lesson. So let's talk about what he does around this time. So he's rebuilding the palaces and temples on the Acropolis after the Persians invaded. The Persians went into Athens and they burned the city and they caused a bunch of destruction. So Pericles, he wants to rebuild Athens. And he wants to make Athens the most beautiful place to live. So he's creating all of these building projects and he's fixing all of the damage and he's putting a lot of money into this. This is around the time where the Parthenon is being destroyed. There is one problem with Pericles having all of these building projects. He's using the money from the Delian League to pay for them. So if you are a member of the Delian League, you have to pay an annual fee to have that protection and all the pros. So what Pericles is doing is he's taking that money and he's putting it towards rebuilding Athens and he's kind of creating an Athenian empire without it being referred to as an empire. So it's an empire without the name of being called an empire. Pericles, he also creates long walls. And these long walls are connected to Piraeus, which is an area by the sea. So what Pericles' idea was is he would, wanted to create these long walls from Athens to Piraeus or the sea in case there was some type of invasion like the Persians or if there was another war. So Athens would have a direct line to the sea and to get supplies. And if you remember, Athens has a very strong navy, so no, it will be hard for invaders to disrupt their system if Athens' navy is there. Slowly, the Delian League is turning into Athens' empire, and I just mentioned that. So Pericles is using the money, and the Delian League is becoming stronger, and it's kind of turning into an empire. It's just not called an empire. The other city-states are starting to notice it, and they're starting to resent Athens because they're noticing how big and power-hungry it's becoming. And this is going to lead to some turmoil between the city-states because they're starting to grow that resentment, and they're realizing how strong Athens is, so they're not too happy with Athens. But the biggest turning point of this time is Athens decides to attack a Spartan ally, and this is what's going to lead to the Peloponnesian Wars. So Athens kind of messes up. They decide they're going to attack a Spartan ally, and they should have thought of the consequences of this. Sparta was not just going to let this go, so Sparta realizes what happens, and they declare war on Athens. So finally, we are going to have the ultimate showdown of Sparta versus Athens, along with our allies. But it is important to know it's finally a war that we're going to talk about, Sparta versus Athens. So what I want you to do is pause this video and read the questions. There's four questions here. I want you to try to fill in the blanks. So pause it. Do it as best as you can. 
and then hit play and I will show you the answers. So here are the answers. Number one, Athens created the Dalian League as a military defensive alliance in case the Persians returned. So they were using this, they had this league set up in case they ever needed it. But as we talked about, it kind of evolved into something else. And Pericles is now using that money to help rebuild Athens. Sparta refused to join and reformed the Peloponnesian League, a voluntary alliance group. So they are the competing league to the Delian League. Pericles is going to take the money from the Delian League and decides to beautify Athens, repairing the damage from the Persian invasion. And one cause of the Peloponnesian Wars was when Athens decided to attack a Spartan ally. Now that is all I have for you today. It was a very quick lesson, shorter than the last. What I want you to do, if you didn't already, take notes, copy down these questions, and put them in your notes. Feel free to watch this again, and if you have any questions, just bring them into class tomorrow. All right, see ya. Have a nice day.